In this video, we're going to learn to make the hat that I'm wearing right now. It's called Fimmel Hat, Fimmel hat and it's designed by Tannis Gray, and it's brought to us by Dale Garn, because we're using their yarn kit in this hat. If you would like to get your kit and your copy of the pattern to follow along, just click the little I in the upper right-hand corner that'll take you to my website. Um, there are three different colorways available in this kit. Uh, we can cut away to the pattern photo. That is kit number one. And I'm wearing kit number two. These colors are really similar to kit number one, but they're just, they're lighter colors. And then kit number three is uh, this one, purples and purples and green. You can see it looks really different in this one. This hat is so much fun to knit. This is what got me started on my obsession with knitting Fair Isle hats. I knit these two and then I've, um, I went on, I'm still in the middle of this kick to knit more and more Fair Isle hats, one after the other. I love it. Everyone I know is getting one for Christmas. But let's talk about the kit. <laughs> the kit comes with um, five skeins of yarn, and this is 100% alpaca. It's Dale alpaca. And I really normally wouldn't think that alpaca would be a good choice for Fair Isle because you would lose stitch definition because alpaca is fuzzy. But this yarn is just a little bit fuzzy. And you can see there's great st stitch definition in this hat. You get five little um, skeins or 50 gram skeins of yarn. And by my math, that is enough to complete three hats. But you also are going to get a mitts pattern, a matching mitts pattern. I haven't seen the mitts pattern yet, but I understand that it's part of the kit. So there is plenty of yarn to knit. Um, I, would, I would guess probably a couple of hats and a couple of mitts. But I haven't seen the mitt pattern to do the math on that yet. Anyway, go ahead and click the little I and go to my website and get your Fimmel hat kit in the colorway of your choice. And we are going to cover um, chart reading and decreases and we kind of have a unique cast on and rib in this hat and that's all coming up next. If you have your yarn kit and your pattern, you are ready to go. We're going to get started with the cast on and the unique cuff first and go into um, pattern reading or the chart reading in this section. First, let's go and take a close up uh, at the hat. This is kit number two, the lighter color, uh, a little bit lighter than kit number one in the pattern photo. It's a very cool design. We have pretty short floats going on the whole time, so there's no need to um, work a really long float. And this is something I'm pretty excited about. Look at the top of the hat, isn't that gorgeous? That's how the decreases all come together. And this is kit number three, the purples and green. It looks so different, doesn't it? With the different colors. Okay, so first we're going to get started um, with the cast on. And actually, I need some yarn. This pattern has you using two different 16 inch needle sizes, and we use the smaller of the two on the cuff. And we're going to use a German cast on. So to leave yourself enough yarn, you want to wind the yarn around the needle like this and count. And you can count, you know, like 50 <clears throat> and then multiply that by the cast on number that you need. That's a technique for any time you're doing that cast on. And then make the slip knot at that point and you'll know you have enough yarn. The German twisted cast on is nice and stretchy for hat cuffs. And sometimes, well, I know that I use it kind of as a standard in hat cuffs. Um, even if the pattern doesn't call for it, just because I like the way, I like the sturdiness and the stretch to it. So I'm using the smaller needles and I've got a slip knot on the needle and you're going to set yourself up like you're doing a slingshot cast on. And what I've done is I have the tail end in front and the working yarn in back. I take my two pincher fingers and put it um, between the two strands of yarn and then take these other fingers and grab the yarn that's hanging like this. So that's the basic setup. And if you're used to the slingshot cast on, um, it's a little bit more steps to it. You'll see here. I'm going to do this plenty of times, so don't worry. You first want to go under both strands on the thumb side, back to center, over one strand on the finger. Whoops, I think I'm messing up. Hold on. Uh, you know what? I do this so automatically so many times that to slow it down, no, I know what I did, <laughs> okay. Uh, slip knot, pinch your fingers. Okay, there we go. 
under both strands on the thumb, back to center, between the two strands on your thumb, back to center, grab the strand on your first finger, back to center, under the close strand on your thumb, over the far strand on your thumb, back to center. Drop what's on your thumb and tighten it up. Don't worry, <laughs> we're going to do this a lot more. Then you set yourself up again. I'm going to pause a lot in this one, so in case you're following along, you can catch up with me. Under both strands, between the two strands, back to center, grab the strand on your first finger, back to center, under the close strand, over the far strand, back to center, let go of the loop on your thumb. German twisted ca cast on, also called Old Norwegian cast on. Under both, between the strand on your finger, under the close strand, over the far strand, drop the loop on your thumb. I'll do it this time without talking. Okay, hopefully that's enough so you have got it. You can practice it a little bit. Um, you can rewind this video to get that. I want to show you that it seems like so much in a cast on, but once you get into like the dance of it, you get the dance steps down, it doesn't take a long time to work this cast on. You see here. So that's kind of full speed, but it'll take you a while to get there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to get that right away. So once you have the cast on, then we're ready to start working the ribbing, the bottom ribbing of the cap here, and this is exactly what we're going to work. And I have a little bit of the chart printed out so we can follow along. Um, this is the pattern repeat. This is kind of an advanced pattern, so I would imagine that most people have a little bit of chart reading at least. We're going to repeat this five times around the hat, and this is just a little bit of the, of the chart here. The first round is knitting in the dark color, and then the next round is knit, purl, purl, knit, purl, purl, knit, and the purl stitches are in uh, the blue color. So that's what I'm going to show you now. It's kind of unique. I'm not sure that I've ever worked Fair Isle and ribbing at the same time. It might be the first time. So I'm ready to work row two here. I've got my knit. I need to start with a purl stitch in the core, oh, in the blue color. So I'm going to put my needle in like I'm ready to purl and attach my yarn, purl, purl, and now I'm going to pull that yarn back so that I have both strands in back because we're going to want both strands in back just so the front of the work stays nice and I'm ready to work a knit and then I pull the blue yarn forward to purl, purl. Pull it back to knit, blue yarn forward to purl, purl, and back to knit. So that's the, um, that's the ribbing. And anytime you're working Fair Isle, I always make sure you want to have, um, keep one color consistently on the top and one color consistently on the bottom. And so that's why you notice I'm throwing this way for the lighter color and this way for the darker color. And that's, that's a dominant, dominant color thing and it'll make your work look more even. I always keep the lighter color on top and make that the dominant color so that it doesn't get lost in the sea of the darker color. So that's that and um, you see here on the chart that you'll work this and you'll change to the coral for a few rounds and then you'll um, continue with the blue. And then once you get past row 12, there is no more purling. It's all knitting at that point. Um, what else do I want to show you from this here before I move on? First row completed. Um, okay. I want to show you, well, let me show you on the purple one. 
The pattern, um, the chart looks really long, and it looks like you have um, a long way to carry each color. I got smart, and I never broke the yarn after I got smart. You can see this is the inside of my hat, and this is the, um, the beginning of the round. And it looked like, oh, well, I'm done using white here. I have a long way to go before I have to work white again, when in fact it actually came up really quickly. And once I learned that, I just kept carrying all five colors all the way up the hat. And it is fine. It, didn't, um, it doesn't affect the work at all. It all ends up blocking out nicely. That is just a little tip from me to you. And then once you get the ribbing finished and you realize you're going to carry the yarn, it's just basic um, color chart reading. This is one, you're going to knit this five times around this um, round of dark and then switch to coral. And then this is a good example of how short the floats are. It goes uh, dark, yellow, yellow, dark, yellow, yellow. You see we're just, we're only carrying the dark for two stitches behind the, um, the yellow. I think that's all I wanted to show you. I feel like I have this sample here. I feel like I'm missing something. Just one second here. Oh, this is the finished rib. Well, that's fine. If I think of it, we'll cover it in the next segment. I have this, this sample, and I'm not sure what I was going to show with it. But the next important part, once you've finished working through the entire color chart, is the decreases. And you saw how we had that beautiful star at the top of the hat. And that's what we're going to cover next. Once you're finished with the whole hat, we're ready to get into the decreases. And before we do that, you know, I knit up this sample to show in the video. And <laughs> for the life of me, I couldn't figure out in the last segment, but I think I knit up this sample to demonstrate switching to larger needles. And I don't know why. I mean, this I, it didn't seem like this sample was worth that. You're just going to grab the larger needle and just start knitting with it until you knit all the stitches off the smaller needles, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, if I think of it, I, don't, I guess I'll, I'll add a note to this video, but um, I am showing all the techniques used. I know that much. Anyway, um, we are ready to start the decreases on the hat, and it's a really simple process that, process that ends up looking very cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hat again. Here we have this awesome star pattern, and I, I was going to show the purple one, but the colors are kind of dark. I think it shows up better on camera with this one. And this is the little bit of chart that makes all that happen. So I want, I want to cover this, I want to talk about this. It's really pretty simple. You're going to continue to read the color chart, and then we have decreases running up this side and decreases running up this side. And I, when I knit this, I ended up placing uh, markers between each section. I didn't use markers when I was knitting the whole hat, but it was easier to have a ring marker um, separating each section when I was doing the decreases. So you're going to continue doing the color chart along with the decreases. Along this side, we have a left-leaning um, uh, stripe through the box, and that means SSK. And on this side, we have a right-leaning stripe through the box, and that's knit two together. And so this is every row. You're going to knit two together, or I'm sorry, SSK, work the color pattern, and then the last two stitches, knit two together. And then the next round is SSK, work the color pattern, and knit two together. And you keep doing that until you're down to um, too few stitches to fit around on the circular needles, and you'll switch to double-pointed needles until you just have um, three stitches left, and then you have a double decrease here that'll leave you um, with just one stitch in that segment. And um, like I said, it ends up being pretty simple. You see here that mine, um, mine looks pretty, I think it looks pretty good. You know, the, everything is lining up, my SSKs and my knit two togethers. It probably won't look like this right after you knit it. I, um, this one is absolutely blocked and, and the stitches have all been evened out. So it looks, it looks better. It looks a lot better when you're doing decreases and fair aisle in the top of a hat like this. And you can take it from me because I've been knitting one fair isle hat after the other, <laughs> so I'm kind of an expert with this. But there's something else that I want to mention. I have a video called Blocking Hats, 
And since I've been knitting so many Fair Isle hats, I've kind of modified that for Fair Isle. And the reason for that is, you know, we really want to um, stretch out the floats to make everything even. And when we're, the easy way to do that is a little bit different than just drying it flat. Of course, you can still dry it flat if you like, but this is my method. I have a candle holder, a wrought iron candle holder that's about this tall. You can use anything that is taller than the hat is long, right? Anything kind of skinny. And then I put an upturned cereal bowl on top of that, and then I soak my hat in the wool wash and um, roll it up in a towel and squeeze out the extra water, and then I'm ready to go with, with um, blocking this. And the first thing I'll do is kind of even it out like this to um, get the floats kind of even. And then I've got this whole cereal bowl and candlestick holder thing. Just put that over the top. And the reason that this works is because, especially when you have Fair Isle all the way to the very center of the hat, that will help even out those floats and um, let the whole thing dry flat. So once the hat is on uh, the upturned cereal bowl, I put my fingers in there and just kind of even out the the last little bit of hat that's hanging longer than the cereal bowl. I, I'm sure people have different shape, differently shaped cereal bowls than I have, but this is what worked for me to get the whole thing to all the floats to even out all the way around the hat. Anyway, uh, many thanks to Tannis Gray for letting us use her, uh, her pattern, and many thanks to Dale Garn for uh, sponsoring this video. Again, all the information for everything you see in this video is on my website, and you can get there by clicking the little eye in the upper right-hand corner. I'm looking forward to seeing your finished hats. Good luck. What? <laughs>